In this video, we're going to discuss a little bit more in depth why you would want to plan and sketch a website out before actually going in and coding it. Normally, a lot of folks would consider this to be part of the user interface or the user experience side of design. However, whenever you're doing all things such as a full stack developer with HTML and CSS, it's good to have a game plan going in before you actually start trying to lay out your website. A few notes on this. Number one, this is actually very important. You really shouldn't be working with a client and then starting to code right out of the gate. You want to give the client an idea or a working type of, of prototype that they can review. Don't be going in and coding right, out of, right from the beginning and then trying to charge the client. Now, how do we go about this or why do we go about this? Let's take a look at a website. So for my demo, I picked Twitter. Twitter is actually really well designed from a usability standpoint. You can see the three column layout here for each of the elements where you have kind of your what's happening, the searching Twitter element, but then you have the navigation that's pretty prominent right on the side here. And then finally, you have the Twitter feed right down the center here, organized as far as what is the most recent thing or some of the more commonly liked items as far as the layout goes. Then down at the bottom here, you can see you also have mess direct messages and also as far as any form of options pertaining to your account. Now, a company like Twitter didn't just sit down and start designing this. So if we pull this concept back as far as planning our website out, so for instance, in chapter five, which one of the things you will be graded on is the plan and sketch of your overall website, what are some of your options? This doesn't have to be very glamorous at all. For instance, you could actually just use PowerPoint if you wanted to. The idea behind making a wireframe is that you are going to just note as far as the overall design of the product is concerned. So for instance, I could be using my insert area and I could grab a text field again. So notice that I'm just choosing some text here and I'll actually take this up to maybe eh, 72 is a little big. Let's go down to 60. And maybe so that I can get an idea of design here, maybe I know I want a sans serif. So maybe I do Arial. We'll get into typefaces a little bit later here. However, notice that I'm not concerned about the actual content of the website. That's not the point here. The point at this uh, current time is that you are going to go in and you are arranging the elements of the website to how they should look. So I could even go one step further here, like maybe I do another insert and now I'm going to choose like a shape. So let's say maybe I do like a shape here and you know to me that's telling me that's a horizontal rule and maybe I actually change the color of it for some reason I decide it needs to be orange. <music> From here, what I can actually do is I can go through now and I can continue to use shapes and the text fields to make my designs. So maybe now I do a text box, you know, maybe across here, navigation elements, go here, home, about, oh, uh, contact, portfolio, reference, and so on and so forth. Again, I'm trying to get a feel of what the page is going to look like. And then lastly, I could maybe do one more insert. I could actually do another shape here and maybe right here, I'll do something like this where maybe I do more of, I do no fill and we just have a shape outline. And in here, you know, maybe I add in some more text. Uh, let's see, my text box. And maybe I say page content here. And then lastly, maybe I do one more insert for another shape. Maybe right down across the bottom here. Once again, and footer area of web page. And then actually what I'll do is I'll maybe shrink this down just a hair. 
But there you go. So now what I have here is kind of the starting point of what the web page layout is going to look like. And that's really all there is to it. Do we actually use PowerPoint in the industry? Uh, you can. I did want to present also in case anybody was interested. It is a free to use uh, software package. It's completely in your web browser and it's called Figma. Figma allows us to not only create layouts, but you can also create interactive kind of demos and prototypes to show to clients. And that can be shown on different types of, uh, different types of screen resolutions. You can use uh, your Google login. So I'll go ahead and grab my Google here real quick. And you're brought into this kind of web-based interface here. So what you'll want to do is when you're looking here, you're actually going to look to the right-hand side of the screen here, and there's a design file option here. So I can actually click on that, and it'll make a brand new file for me. And maybe what I say is first off at the top here, you see how it says untitled. Maybe I call this my project one underscore sketch. Now, before you dive in and do anything though, there's one more thing you need to do as far as the layout and workflow. Over on the right hand side, you have three elements. You have your background, you have your export for design, but you also can prototype specific to, notice you have different types of devices. You can also then, depending on the device or the layout, you can actually choose the background. And then what's actually kind of nifty about this, as you get deeper into HTML and CSS, is you can actually look at what CSS elements that Figma suggests for you to create your items here. So for instance here, like if I come over and I want to design as far as either a frame is concerned, and I come back into prototype, so I've selected that I want the frame to be drawn and under prototype, you can now see not only do I have the phone options and the watch options, I even have the desktop options. And what you're seeing here are your measurements. So maybe for sake of argument here, I say I need a MacBook Pro. Puts in a MacBook Pro layout for me. And now, just like its counterpart, like in PowerPoint, I can begin the process of actually laying out or drawing my elements. So like if I do a rectangle, for instance. And once again, I come down to the bottom, kind of draw across the base here. And then I grab my text tool and I say footer area, come under design. And when you come under design, when you're working with these elements here, you can see here's like my text. So maybe I just keep it at regular because this is just a note, but I'm choosing, you know, maybe I want to use, um, whoop, I want to do this later, but maybe I, let's go back and you know, use our, let me go up all the way to the top and we'll go to Arial. And as you can see, you got a ton of options going on here in, um, in Figma. So I will also include the link for you here. So let's see, uh, almost there. So ooh, they actually don't have Arial. So let's go with Arimo. There we go. But then I can come in and inspect and down at the bottom here, you can see, notice it's showing me the positioning, the coloring, all that sort of stuff that's being applied to the text. So from a comparing, this does take a little bit of a learning curve for Figma and is more industry standard. However, as you can see, it's got a little bit more of a learning curve in comparison to its PowerPoint counterpart. So if you are just starting out, especially for this first project here where you're creating the personal homepage, if you feel more comfortable working with PowerPoint and just doing like something uh, in there, that's absolutely fine for this. If on the other hand, you're like, you know what, I wanna give Figma a whirl, you're more than welcome to do that. For PowerPoint, you just need to save the PowerPoint and submit with your project. Figma, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to come up under share and you can either you can copy the link if you like, and then you can put it into uh, your uh, into your submission folder with your uh, with your project. You also have some other options as well here that you could go in and if you really wanted to, um, we're not going to be worrying about presenting, uh, but you could also come in and it looks like kind of the main item here you're going to be working with is creating the link if you want to share it. 
completely up to you if you want to go that route. Um, outside of that, that's kind of, you know, you can also, you know, let's see, save under the file drop down, you can save a local copy if you like, if you want to actually have a physical picture. But hopefully this gives you some ideas and gives you a little bit more guidance for your first project working with HTML, what we mean by planning and sketching your personal homepage.